So these are all fuses. Every one of these things is designed to protect our circuits if there's a problem in the circuit. And how they work is there's a little piece of metal inside each one of these fuses. And that piece of metal is designed to burn or melt if temperature in the circuit gets high. If I have a short circuit where um, my load, whatever it happens to be, is being bypassed, so current is going straight from my power to ground, okay, straight from power to ground, then I'm going to generate a ton of heat. And that heat can start a fire unless the fuse blows. If the fuse blows, then the circuit goes open. Current can no longer uh, pass through the fuse and into the circuit, so it protects the circuit from further damage. Now, when the fuse blows, it doesn't fix itself. That is a permanent failure. And what we need to do is determine the source of the short, fix the short, then replace the fuse. Once the fuse has been replaced, the short's been repaired, then our circuit should function normally. This doesn't look so much like these fuses here, but it actually is. This wire right here and right here, those are known as fuse, fuse links. And the wire itself inside here is not standard wire. It's made of a lighter gauge and more meltable wire. So it does exactly the same thing as all of these. And these are different examples that we're going to see on modern vehicles. Now I'm also going to show you how to test these fuses because blown fuses can be kind of a pain in the butt. So I've got this vehicle here and uh, it was involved in a uh, racing accident and one of the circuits doesn't work. I've already figured out um, which circuit is at fault, um, but I haven't actually started diagnosing it. So we're going to take a look at a couple of different ways to figure out what's wrong. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to check this using a test light. So this is my basic test light, and it's a very fast and effective way to check to see if I have voltage in areas. I'm going to ground my test light clip to that strut upper mount bolt, and then if I go like this, all right, can you see that the test light lit up? So what I'm doing is I'm touching the metal portion of this maxi fuse. I touch the metal portion here. It lights up on both sides and that tells me that electricity can come through it. That fuse is good. That fuse is good. This one is also good. So these are all testing to be good. Now, as I'm coming back here, and I'm checking these smaller fuses here. That one's good, that one's good, good, good. I got voltage here, and on that voltage there. Good, good. Voltage here, yep. And no voltage here. So this fuse is blown. It only has the voltage that's coming into the fuse. It doesn't have voltage coming out like this one does. This has voltage coming in, voltage going out, in, out, in, nothing out. So that fuse is blown and that makes sense because that's actually on the circuit that I know is a fault. I can also test my fuses using a meter and it's just a little more unwieldy, a little more time consuming. But I'm going to take the same thing. I'm going to clip to that upper strut mount bolt on my ground lead. And on my power lead here, I'll use the power lead to probe. Okay, so now I need to turn my meter on. And since I'm measuring direct voltage, I go to the V with the lines above it. That stands for direct. And then I can go here. I've got battery voltage there, 12.22, 12.23, 12.23, 
Okay, so same thing. Each one of these is passing voltage, and I'm measuring it. I'm getting a more accurate measurement than I would with the test light, but it's a little more time consuming. So if I want fast, I'll use the test light, and I'm continuing to measure all of these. And now I come to the blown fuse. I have a millivolt reading. See the M and the V over there? That's millivolt, that's very small. Here, I've got battery voltage. Here, millivolts. So again, that's showing me that that fuse is not passing electricity. The current is not flowing through it. The fuse is bad. So you're going to find on modern vehicles that you've got fuses all over the place. So this is an underhood fuse box. And then it's kind of hard to see. But this right here is also a fuse. It's a mega fuse, and it's a big blade fuse that actually bolts into the wiring harness. And if I come around the vehicle, and come into it, you can see that right there is also a fuse box that's inside the vehicle. And so when we're working on these modern cars, you got to remember that you're going to have fuses all over the place. And so finding an electrical diagram that'll kind of help you, um, you know, with fuse locations um, is going to be pretty useful for your diagnosis. So that's the long and the short of how to test a fuse. And now let's take a quick look at that blown fuse. So this right here is a tool that we use to remove fuses. And I'm going to take it and kind of pop it open a little bit and grab down on the fuse with it. And then just going to hold that pretty snug and pull. So there's the fuse. Okay. And actually, you can see pretty well on this one that the wire inside that fuse is no longer in one piece. So on the right is a fuse with a good wire and you can see that it's complete and on the left is the fuse with the bad wire and you can see that it's blown. So you could visually inspect as well. You could take all the fuses out and look at them one at a time, but that can be kind of time consuming. These right here, a lot of time the little copper in there, you'll see that it's melted with this style. It may be a little more difficult. So sometimes with a fuse like this, we have to go back to the meter. But this time we're gonna put our meter on the ohm scale, like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect to the fuse itself like this so that I've got my meter reading on each one of these legs, one here, one here. And then I wanna take a look and see what my meter is saying. And that's kind of interesting. That says open loop or open line, OL, and that means that this fuse is blown. There's no current path through there, so my resistance is extremely high. It's infinite res resistance. And if I'm looking at this, it's very hard to tell that that fuse is actually blown. So this style of fuse, a lot of time you actually have to measure the resistance through the fuse. And that's about it. That's about all the fuse love you're going to get today. If you're checking fuses and trying to figure this stuff out, it's really not that hard. And, uh, you know, just take your time and be precise and you'll be just fine.